Hello and welcome to the first video on the React Native version 2, a course taught by Katty Kramen. So she is now a senior developer uh, at Formidable uh, and now he's currently... It's funny because she started her career as a mathematician and then now move on to the development here. This is a common pattern on certain mathematicians, for example, the creator of Node.js. Ryan Dahl actually started his career as a mathematician and then he say, hey, you know what, I would like to do something that is more practical. Node.js. So, uh, and the other is, so, Katty Graman uh, is this software engineer that also is now working and has uh, contribution on React Native, which is good, which is great. And here we are, right? So the date of this publication was uh, May 5, 2020, almost four years from this recording. And today's video, I'm going to now record myself taking notes from this course because I cannot record this course uh, as I learn it. I already received a flag uh, from one of these legal LLC or a legal firm that uh, wrong and master hire. Uh, so they tell me, hey, you shouldn't do that. You, uh, you're exceed, you're far exceeding the fair use. Makes sense. Okay. So there we got it. I'm going to take some notes here. And yeah. So first thing first is outline. Okay, so outline is what is the structure of this course? So you have is the introduction. So introduction. All right, so the introduction. Right after that, we have something called the setup. Okay, so what are the things that we need to do in order to make this, to make this project work on uh, your local machine? And then the basic components. So basic, basic component. So remember that after all, React Native is just part of the React ecosystem. And the React after all is just a library that allows you to render elements. So you get an state uh, that you want to generate view out of it. So basic components, uh, and then uh, I look at the navigation, which is another uh, component here, especially on this interface, the mobile interface. Uh, and then we have hooks and network requests. Hooks and network requests, okay. That's right, hooks and network requests something that is by far the most use case for this kind of application, as well as forms, <laughs> as well as forms, okay, form, uh, yep, as well as form, and that'll be this introduction of React Native, okay? So, so by the end of, of this, video uh, I, I will I will be okay I will be able to now oh, okay makes sense so by the end of this video I will be able to look at the introduction what is react native who is this instructor Katie Kremen and also understand what are the things that you need to do in order to develop uh, react application mobile applications so let's start it yeah, first off, I'm really excited for this because I really know them about React Native. I've been using a smartphone for years, I can use probably. And um, yeah, I'd always wondered how it works and like how all these little elements fit together. And it's kind of fun. Oh, this is the core website. Okay. Uh, the website. Okay. The website, the 
website or the, the course website. All right, and right after that, we're gonna define is the resources, which is something very, very important. Okay, that. Hold you. Okay. Good. All right. Um, the objective of the course, like my main goal, is basically to give you the knowledge and the tools necessary to start building your React in the application. So in this course, we're going to be googling things, we're going to be looking at documentation, we're going to be debugging and making mistakes because I'm going to be typing out all the solutions live, so I will definitely make mistakes. So basically, I will be giving you this course the way I would build software, so you can just take the, this knowledge and just Start to find okay, so the goal of this, all right, so the goal of this, because that all this is the goal, so the goal is to learn strategies and techniques and techniques to yeah learn strategy learn strategy and technique to help you build react native apps so this is not for enterprise react native this is just for uh, to get yourself familiar with this all right So what are the best practice conventions do and don't? Exactly. So I build React Native apps to live in for a living. The aim of this course is to give you the knowledge and resources necessary to start building your own React app. Exactly. This is to start building your own React Native app. In our case, because we are working for a company that actually is looking and needs someone that uh, is there, that, is, that needs someone that needs uh, React Native, and of course, you need to have is React behind the scenes, how that works, what is the structure, the, the tools, the initial tools that you need in React, as well as the core, or the React core concept, the capabilities, and the special cases. And then, okay. Giving you this course the way I would build software, so you can just <coughs> And then you can build is your own React application, React native application. Um, I've got a little course guide here. Um, firstly, all these course notes are hosted, so if you haven't already, you can go to my GitHub pages. It's called React Native VC, and you can follow along in real time. It's actually quite handy as well because there's a bunch of code examples that you might want to uh, copy to the version from uh, slides. I've got a little um, legend here. Okay, so we got a look. So, um, so here we're gonna take a look at a little bit, a little bunch of code. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a bunch of codes, and as we move on through this life. Okay, so that's the goal here, and you have uh, specific goals, but for now, it actually works. So, um, some of the chapters are marked with this lovely note emoji. This means that they are exercises. They are broken apart into two sections. There's an exercise, and then followed um, is like a little chapter with a eyes emoji. I will give you the solution to the exercise. How you approach these ex is completely up to you. If you're the kind of person that learns best by doing, um, I would recommend spending like 10 to 15 minutes just having the yeah. exercise and then listening to the I definitely am a person that learns by doing. I also make notes of the little link emoji. So these are links to the solution of the preceding exercise. If I go to my GitHub, so these are links 
to these bits. So these are all the codes that we're going to do. So each link will uh, link to something like this, so you can see. Okay, so this is now the commit master here. Okay, so you can see it's all the things that we are going to see four years ago. That's pretty interesting. Okay. So in fact, this is the course. Awesome project, React Native. There is no, not even, <laughs> lol. There is no even, okay. There is no even, mm -hmm. of course, website, repo, GitHub repo, GitHub repo, okay, which is good, and then you got it, okay. Well, we just added a repo, so you just check your work, or if you get lost. Yeah, you pretty much do this. Uh, use this if you are lost. If you are, if you are lost. And finally, um, you can use Excel for this course, or you can use Neuron Mac. Yeah, it's completely up to you. There are only I think three parts where the instructions differ, and in these in these sections, the chapters are piece of either Expo or RM. So just choose the one that applies to you. I will be covering. Right. So about you, the intended audience of this course are basically people who are familiar with JavaScript, but exactly. Who is this course for? The who is this course for? The goal. Who is who is this core? Who is this core for? Who is this core for? Okay. So people who are familiar, exactly. So people who are familiar with JavaScript. That's right. Uh, exactly, but new to React Native. If you already know React, that's actually perfect because a lot of React is immediately transferable to React. Exactly. So if you know, if you know React, a lot of the knowledge is immediately transferable yeah transferable to react native and even in the same in the name it tells you that and in this course uh, if you're new to react native don't worry about it i will be explaining more the react concepts from the ground up okay this also uh, going to ex Explain the core concept of React, so we can skip that part. I don't need it. Cut the fluff. Basically, how React Native differs from React. From React. So I'll be focusing on okay. From the of React. Um, but the focus of this course is basically how React Native differs from React. From React. Exactly. The main Okay, the learn strategy and technique to help you build React apps by understanding the concept between exactly by understanding the concept. Okay, so by exactly it's gonna be one goal: learn strategy and technique to help you build React app native app by understanding. The concept between the React on the web. Um, but the focus of the course is basically how React Native differs from React on the web. So 
Exactly. The concept by understanding the concept that the fur from react native and react on the web because they are two different uh, interfaces two different way of how the users can interact with your application two different devices two different sales channels I will be using a MacBook Pro and an iPhone simulator and an emulator, and I'll demo some things on my phone as well. You don't need to match. Okay. I will be using a MacBook Pro and an iPhone simulator and an emulator, and I'll demo some. Exactly. You don't need to match my setup, but you should have either a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine, either a physical device, iPhone or Android, or a simulator emulator installed. Okay, which is the thing that you need to install. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Requirements. Setup requirements. Okay. Setup requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is part of the set of requirements. Okay, yeah, it's like set up requirements here. Uh, PC, okay, PC with either Mac. Exactly. Oh, because I thought I would work on e-tickets. Uh, I already set up my entire environment for that. Uh, but now for this new ticket, I need to now set up, uh, which is from the driver app. I need to set up my environment to run now uh, React Native, which is setting up the yeah, which is uh, setting up the Android Studio. Uh, in in our case, we're gonna use uh, something called uh, EXO. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh, connecting all of this part. You don't need to match my setup, mm -hmm. but at a minimum, you should have a Mac, Windows, or Linux machine. And a phone or an emulator. Exactly. PC, either Mac, Windows. Exactly. Set of requirement. PC, either Mac, Windows. Exactly. Set of requirement. PC, either Mac, Windows. Uh, or. Yeah, PC e with either Mac, Windows. Uh, or Linux and a mobile phone this is an investment that I need to do I'm gonna buy is an iPhone I never thought that I will buy an iPhone here we are man. <laughs> here we are uh, before buying that I would like I want to make sure that I that this actually, uh, whatever environment is actually is can now output and build is this, um, okay, it can now actually build this. Mm, that's what they're using is extra. All right, things so started to make a little bit a little sense here. Okay, a mobile phone, iPhone or Android or a device that can emulate emulate them. So I 
Uh, my name is Patty. I'm a senior software engineer currently working at Mitable, and I built into JavaScript. <laughs> Gordon. Sure and steady. Sure and steady. Sure and steady, girl. Sure and steady. Oh, now he's working at Expo. Okay, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Instructor and from the master as well as Egghead and British. Oh, Slovakia. <laughs> Why I'm not surprised. Like she has a little, little tone of things. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So this is their tweet. All right. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This is their tweet. And uh, the Twitter, Gary Kraman. Yeah, even in his name is like Gary Kraman. Uh, Twitter, right? So Twitter, right? Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now she's working at Expo. Why well, I'm not surprised. Develop, review, and deploy native apps from single React code base for Android, iOS, and WhatsApp. Exactly. So now they hire that service as a way to say, hey, you know what? Um, it'll make more sense to actually have this application or this service built that help developers who doesn't have access to any of these devices, like an iPhone, that kind of thing, to do that work. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> At the moment, I mostly build things in JavaScript and React Native, but I've also built in React and in JavaScript. I actually started up, I uh, started out programming at university where I studied mathematics, and then I joined um, joined a company where I thought I was going to write algorithms in mathematics, and ended up writing web applications in .NET. Um, and after that, I segued into JavaScript and into the app. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, lots of links to my Twitter and Twitter. So this is what the course uh, will look like. We've got a section on introduction, got set up, then we'll go into looking at basic components of React Native. Um, then we've got a new two parts, which is all around navigation. And then we're going to look at scripts and working with the tests. And finally, forms. I've added some sections on extra credits as well. I'm not expecting you to actually be able to follow these on the day. So you can read them in the mm, There's some extra. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. hey. Chill, chill, girl. Chill, chill, chill. Uh, extra credit. Okay, extra credit. Expo, ejecting from Expo, platform specific code and security, extra credit. Okay. We got something here that called extra credit. Okay. Which is good. Okay. Well, you can read where you, you have time. Okay. Mm hmm Let's go for the beginning. Okay, so what is React Native? What is React Native? Let's start from the beginning, shall we? Okay, so what is React Native? Let's start from the beginning. I don't know why. Yes. Okay, that's right. That's better. So what is React Native? Hmm. So if you look at your phone, your phone is really just a small but incredibly powerful computer. Mm -hmm. If you if you look if you look at your phone, it's a very powerful computing 
device. Yep. You might have heard this analogy already, but um, the average smartphone we have nowadays is um, a million times more powerful than a guidance computer that sends humans in the moon. Okay, you might have heard this analogy before. Analogy before, which is the current mobile apps, the current mobile devices we have today are million powerful. Okay, has one million times more RAM. Got this. Has have we have today have more million and I think this is something important, especially as to gain a little bit of context. Context it matters. Context matters. So have one million have one million times yeah. <laughs> have one million times more uh, RAM in seven 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 million times more uh, one million times more RAM and seven million times more memory more memory it's like you have some issue there that landing that land okay. that guidance that the then the guidance computer from Apollo that the guidance computer from Apollo, Apollo 11, right? It's like Apollo 11 that landed, that landed uh, the first humans of moon, that landed the first humans of moon. I'm not sure if that it is. Man, um, allow me to doubt. Allow me to doubt. Why is that? Uh, especially uh, because as the U.S. is after the Second World War, they set the Breton agreements to say, hey, yeah, we are going to now lead the world. And it's like, yeah, it's like, well, um, it's using React, of course. Uh, it's like, hey, well, um, we need to show off. You know, we need to show off according to real clear signs. Um, the Apollo guidance computer ABC it has it had two thousand forty eight words <laughs> words. Of memory, man, which can be used to store temporary results. You gotta be freaking kidding me. Words, data that is lost when there is no power. This type of memory is referred to as random access memory. Each word comprises 60 binary digits, which been with a bit with a bit being a zero or one. This means that the Apollo computer has 32,768 bits of RAM memory. <laughs> In addition, it has 72 kilobytes of read-only memory, which is equivalent to 5089-824 bits. This memory is programmed and cannot be changed once it is finalized. Exactly, because it's read only. So one is mem one is program, uh, it cannot be changed. Form memory and processing. So to put in more concrete terms, the latest phone typically has four gigabytes of RAM. When this was launched, when this was when this article was published, right? It doesn't tell me that. Anyway, two thousand four. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't tell me when this article was published, which is something that that's one of the 
the thing that I hate from this 2021. No, that was an article. Exactly. This is the kind of thing that I hate from this kind of article. They don't tell when this was published. They don't tell when this was published, and that's when I say, hmm. Okay. Real client sign. Okay, according to Apollo 11, I'm not sure who made this. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure who made this. But also, it doesn't tell you if when this was published. You know, they don't tell you when this was published, so yeah, anyway. So, yes, it's just to gain a little bit more of perspective here. So, phone memories and processing. To put that in more concrete terms, the latest phone typically has 4 GB of RAM. That is, holy moly. <laughs> 3, 6, so this is million, billion in US term or English speaking term. 34 billion bits god this is more than one million to be exact times more memory than apollo computer in okay than apollo computer had in ram <laughs> the iphone also has up to 512 gigabyte of rom memory that is god damn uh, th six, okay, we're talking about trillion, exactly. But again, this is ROM memory, memory that cannot be is read only. What the, what does it mean that is like, imagine that you have a backpack. Imagine that you have two backpack. Okay, one allows you to um, store things where you can access to them. They are random, okay? Uh, but you can store things in one backpack if you want to do hiking. And the other is have prefix stuff for your hiking journey uh, that you can only look at them. If you can retrieve them, you can only look at them. So, for example, uh, in this backpack, you have things like. Um, phone number you can call it uh, how many how how far is your destination uh, what is the uh, the path that we're gonna took it only have information in this backpack that you can look at it you can't do anything more with that so yeah this is the, a great analogy when you say things like that. Um, but, but memory isn't the only thing that matters. The Apollo 11 com uh, computer has a processor, an electronic circuit that performs operations on external data source. Exactly. Based on external data sources, give it to me and I'm going to do something about it. Or in other words, it's like, based on what your mom, dad, tells you you do the thing hey stay away from the stove it's hot if you don't do that you're gonna learn that but you usually follow their advice okay which ran at 0 0.043 megahertz the latest iphone processor is estimated to run about 2000 49 megahertz. Apple doesn't advertise the processing speed, but all of have calculator. Oh, so Apple is smart ass. This means that the iPhone in your pocket has over 100 times the processing power of the computer 
that landed the man on the moon 50 years ago. Oh my God. So this is something important as a way to get a little bit more of perspective of why we're looking at this React Native and also you need to explain that to someone else. So if you look at your phone, it's a very powerful computing device. Uh, you might hear this, you might, you, you might have heard this analogy before, which is the current mobile device we have today have one more, have one million times more RAM. Okay. Which is this. We have today half. So half. 100 times, 100,000 times more computer processing, okay, uh, processing power, exactly, have 100, 100k times more processing power, 2020 20 at the article, Okay, circa 2020, alright, 1 million times more RAM, <laughs> and 7 times millions more memory that, uh, more memory, okay, which is this read-only memory, More RAM, which is that, state of the north. Uh, but what if but what will have been different is the moon landing has stayed on. Okay, but according to that article, is is that right? So you have 100 k, 100 k times more processing power back in 2020, and one million times more RAM than the guy that's computer from Apollo 11 that landed the first human on the moon. This is uh, so. This is pretty crazy what 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 we have what we have achieved yeah what we have achieved in the in the last 50 years holy moly yeah because that was 1969 in the 70s 80s, 80, 90, 1000, 2010, 2020, holy moment. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, but due to their smaller screen and a touch based interface, browsing the web on your smartphone is smooth and smooth. And that is pretty crazy. Um, but due to their smaller screen and a touch based interface, browsing. Mm hmm so uh, but due to 
yeah but to their small interface but to the small screen but yeah but to their smaller interface smaller smaller screen yes. smaller screen and touch point and touch point or touch base on the smartphone it's so suboptimal compared to mm -hmm. so browsing the web with your smartphone is suboptimal suboptimal compared with desktop or laptop or laptop experience mm-hmm totally totally a desktop or a laptop experience um in 2020 this is the fact that i looked up the number of smartphones in the world is 3.5 billion which is desktop or a laptop experience um in 2020 this is the fact that i looked up the number of smartphones in the world is 3.5 billion which is more than half the world so know that in the global stats, uh, a very significant per country, for instance, the market share of iOS was 57.3 in the US, 51.6 in the UK, but only 2.1 in India. As a result, which platform you focus most of your energy should depend on your target audience. It is, and they actually is, is shortening uh, their audience do this. It is clear, however, that you manage to cover both iOS and Android. You will cover 99% of your audience, no matter the country. Now, as a phone, as just a steamy computer, they have operating system the same way your computer does. Some exact, some examples of computer, MacBook, exactly. Some example of computer, the yeah, exactly MacBook, uh, Dell. Lenovo, the uh, operating system like Mac OS, Windows, Linux, uh, some example of phones, iPhone, Samsung, Galaxy S20, Nexus 5, some example of phone operating, iOS. Yeah, but um, this is the expected, expected, expected market, market share of, uh, of iOS. Mobile OS market share worldwide. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tell you, hey, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. No, nope, I won't give you to do that. Okay. Mobile operating system market share worldwide. Can you give it to me? Exactly. Uh, that's interesting. According to Stat Counter, Global Stat Counter. Mm -hmm. Global Stat Counter. Okay, Worldwide Africa. No, 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 By region, South America, Andre. And of course, South America have Android devices, and I don't know where this metric they came from, uh, and for how long? March, okay, in the last year, of course, of course. And worldwide is this: the vast majority of people actually have an, has Android device, but the small one, you know, have access to iOS, but. The point of this is to say, hey, uh, as you can see here, even in the U.S., uh, it's quite split because it has 59% and 49% stat counter global stat. That's, that's interesting. Canada uh, is also more predominant iOS, of course. Canada, uh, U.S., United Kingdom is predominant with Android. Oh, Android, interesting. The market share. 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's very, very interesting. Um, okay. View all regions. But this is now for per region. South America, Europe. I would like to take a look at Europe. Oh, that's well. There are some countries that actually use iOS. I will argue that is France, for example, uh, Germany. So mm -hmm. France, France. Uh, yep, France. Yep, friends. Okay, this is friends. Even in f this is friends. What for real? 16 Android, mm, that's unexpected. Okay, but as you can see here is, uh, let me see another another one which is Australia. And with that, that'll be all for this. I also gonna take a look at this. Um, that's interesting. That's very, very, very interesting, which is Australia. All right, exactly, exactly. The predominant in iOS. So the 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 particular pattern that I can see here is that those countries who has a greater GDP usually usually use more iOS. That's not that's not again. Um. Uh, yeah, this is a, a huge indicator of that countries who have iOS where they're iOS is where iOS is predominant in the market share is because those countries have uh, more uh, purchasing power uh, than the other countries. So it has a huge uh, or it has significant huge purchasing power compared with the world, compared with other regions. So, okay. Mm, in the case of India, of course, like 95% of people actually using that. Uh, and now it's interesting because now slowly uh, people now have using is iOS more and more. Uh, you have KOS, Samsung, No, Nokia, Linux, and other stuff. All right. So with this, which to me is quite, quite, quite interesting. Uh, stat counters, uh, browser data here, browser market share, search market share, OS market share, screen resolution stats, social media stat, device. So the whole point of this is to say, hey, um, use stat counter to grow their business because that's the that's the way how you can. Uh, is have some sort of certainty. Okay, you have now data that is not just what you feel about it uh, or your intuition. Your intuition may be aligned to that or not. But the idea here is to uh, read us that uh, right now is this. This is the data that we're looking for, which to me is very very important research. Okay. Uh, stat counter global stats. So this is global stats for how do you put it? Um, yeah, bloggers, web designers, marketing and SEO professionals. So stat counter global stat for online businesses. Yeah, stat counter global for online businesses. 
is actually very 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 important very 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 important very 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 important yeah very 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 important as I look at this course as I look at, at the react native course from front-end master okay Okay, as I look at React Miracle from Frontend Master. Uh, she she okay she she is now Okay, so Caddy Graman Caddy Graman mentioned a very interesting uh, website. Used for web designers, exactly. Used for web designers marketing. Okay. Used for uh, small business owner. Mm-hmm. Useful um, small business owners uh, to grow their businesses. Makes a lot of sense. React React Native course. That's very 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 important. Completely, my friend. Or, or. Exactly. Kathy uh, Kraman mentioned a very interesting website used for small business owner to grow their business. Can you mention a very interesting website used for small business owners to grow their business? <laughs> uh, 
Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Very, 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 very interesting. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay. That's cool, that's interesting. Totally, 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 totally. So, uh, the idea here is that recognize that now, uh, with this small device, yes, uh, experience, which, which, in, in this small device, which have now one, which, which will have now 100k times more processing power, and one million times, uh, a little bit more than that, than uh, RAM back in 2020, right now it can be way much more, uh, but the point of that is this. Uh, it's not that we have achieved something pretty, pretty crazy in the last 50 years, but do the small interface area of small, small screen and touch base. So browsing the web is not is suboptimal compared to uh, compare with other so compare with desktop or laptop experience. And because the market share, or because the IO, the mobile OS market share uh, is mainly uh, Android. Okay, now show me is the browser here, device vendor market share, mobile tablet, device vendor, no, um, OS market share, exactly, Android, Windows, and iOS, but I want to know is from mobile platforms, okay. Mobile operating system market share worldwide from holy moly uh, from the twenty twenty from twenty twenty from when this course was published, which is May twenty 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 May twenty twenty to right now to March 2024. Yep. Uh, as you can see, uh, sometimes it's the iOS, and the iOS slowly has gained, but sometimes fail. It's interesting that even though, even though that over the past four years of this recording Okay, it's like over the past year of this recording. Uh, so now 79% holy mod. Mm, 
Mm -hmm. So, and because the mobile market share is split into Android, okay, it's split into Android, 70%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy moly, bro. Okay. Yeah, so and because of because the mobile market share is split into Android seventy percent, iOS only eight point forty six percent. Okay. Uh, according to uh, Stat Counter Global Stat. Okay. So according to uh, Stat Counter. Stat Counter. Okay, now it's up to us to know that we have to develop applications for this to broad audience, which is something you cover. So, so if you develop for Android and iOS, you pretty much cover 99% of market share and this is important when it comes when it comes to build apps yeah when it comes to build apps regard regardless 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 the their industry regardless it is industry regardless it is industry specific uh, yeah regardless it is industry specific use case because after all that's the reason of that it's not only for them, it's not only for the industry, but also for the people. Mm -hmm. And um, by looking at the global market share, we find that Android and iOS are clearly in the lead. Together, they make up like 99% of smartphones. And you might be surprised to find out because a lot of you might have iPhones and might know only people who have iPhones. You might be surprised to learn that Android is actually way ahead in terms of market share. It depends on the country. So if you're from the US, more than half the people will have iPhones. Mm -hmm. But for example, in India, um, only like three percent of the users have smartphones. So really, the platform that you focus on should really depend on who you're building an application for. So if you are, if you know that your target audience will be iPhone users, you can get away with mostly focusing. But regardless of who your users are, if you target both Android and iOS, you can be pretty confident that 99% of users will be able to use your app. Now, because phones are just tiny computers, they have an operating system. Um, some examples of computers are a MacBook or a Dell or a Lenovo, and some examples of operating systems for these computers are macOS, Windows, or Linux. Now, to go into the phone world, some examples of phones are iPhone or Samsung Galaxy or Nexus, and some examples of phone operating systems are iOS and Android. Now, applications are designed to run on a particular operating system, so you can't just take an iOS app and examples of phone operating systems are iOS and Android. Now, applications are designed to run on a particular operating system. That's what happened. So, um. 
So if we take a look at a couple examples from from the desktop or mobile world or laptop world we have uh, OS OS like uh, exactly I Mac or OS we have Mac we have Linux we have Windows as well as their uh, manufacturers that he's talking about is the is the um, the manufacturers okay as well as manufacturers okay as well as the manufacturers like Lenovo exactly like Lenovo exactly like Lenovo uh, Lenovo Dell MacBook Lenovo Dell MacBook okay and in the mobile world we have is the um, yeah we have is the uh, OS like Android and in iOS okay Android and iOS and manuf manufacturers manufacturers like um, Snapdragon well it's the creator but Samsung Google Nexus the manufacturers or devices because it is like devices for manufacturers like the iPhone, uh, which is Apple, which is Apple, the uh, iPhone, Samsung Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy, and Samsung, okay, Samsung, Samsung Galaxy, uh, Nexus, Nexus as well. So the idea here is that uh, applications are so applications run only on their OS on on a particular on a particular OS. So you can't just take an iOS app and run it on Android and vice versa. The same way you can't have a Windows app to run on Mac. So you can have, so you you can run, you can't, so you can't run uh, Android apps into i into Mac or iOS apps into Android, right? Or into Samsung. Samsung Galaxy because each one of them has their own developing environment. So in order to get to this dream of targeting non-commercial users, we'll have to build two apps, one for Android and one for iOS. So this is what the story has been the case. Mm -hmm. So in order to hit the 99% market share, we have to build, we have we have we have to have two development workflows. Android and iOS. Okay. One of them using Kotlin, Java or Kotlin. Okay. So Java or Kotlin, Kotlin. 
and the other is using object C or shift. So objective C or shift. Right. Swift. All right. You have to have two development teams or two people or just one person that knows like these two environments because iOS applications are written with Objective C or Swift and Android applications are written in Java or Kotlin. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine the difficulty in this because it's expensive, it's tedious, it's difficult to track features across two completely different Completely. It can become expensive, tedious, hard, hard to keep track how to keep tracking features on different code sets. And um, yeah, most people were having this problem with Facebook and they decided to have a go at solving it. Mm-hmm. So those people so so those people who have who have those problems like Facebook uh, they decide they have they decide to do the same and um, yeah most people were having this problem as they were Facebook and they decided to have a go at it mm -hmm. uh, like Facebook then they decide to and they decide to to have a go yeah and they decide they decide to have a go at solving and they decide to have a go at solving it And this is where React Native comes to play. As you remember that Facebook problems using, they have to create React. Uh, and then now, this is from the web world. And now Facebook say, oh, we also have a problem on the mobile phone. So that's where React Native comes into play. Allows you to create fully native apps, not progressive web apps directly. Okay. So their goal is for you to allow to uh, the goal is for the goal is for you to allow build native web apps, not progressive web apps. One code base, one exactly in one code base, one language in in one code base, one language. One language. Exactly, one code base, one language, one dev team. And most importantly, fully extensible. Interesting. React Native isn't actually the first or the only such library um, that aims to do this, but it is incredibly powerful and arguably the best. Um, but this is because A, we're building fully native web apps, so the compiled React Native application is indistinguishable from a real native application. 
and secondly because it's really authentic. A lot of existing okay. styles react meter application is indistinguishable from a real meter application. Okay. The reason of take a look of take a look at React Native is because very almost in this thing in this thing indistinguishable. A, we're building fully native lab app, so it compiles React Native application is indistinguishable from exactly almost indistinguishable, almost indistinguishable, indistinguishable uh, from a real native app since we are compiling to native code. Uh, and the other is is fully extensible. A real native application, and secondly because it's fully. A lot of existing libraries basically give you this toolbox of things that you can do, but if you want to do anything outside of this, you're lost. But Exactly. A lot of other solutions give you a exactly a lot of a lot of other solutions give you a native, give you a tool set. Okay, a lot of other solutions give you a tool set for that. Okay. A lot of other solutions give you a tool set and if you need something outside of that you are lost. But in React Native you can always you always have the ability to go into the native and code and add in whereas in React Native you always will always have the ability to go into the native code. Furthermore, it's open source, so you can always help out with um, adding in some code that you think is written. And how does it work? Don't worry, we're not going to go crazy technical on this. Uh, but basically, React Native is built in such a way that it targets the existing compilers. So there are compilers that um, accept Java or Kotlin and target the Android platform, and there are compilers that um, accept Objective C or Swift and target the iOS platform. And this is exactly what React Native puts into. And the reason this is powerful is because these compilers are already built to handle it, and it also makes React Native fully really extensible. Other platforms. You can have React Native Windows, React Native Web, React Native VR. Like you could just add more and more compilers to it. You can still have it one. Bit. So it's because right. it's the way how it targets that. And the reason this is powerful is because these compilers are already built to handle it. So there are compilers that open source, you can always check it on this. Uh, but basically, React Native is built in such a way that it targets the existing compilers. So there are compilers. Okay. React Native is built in such a way that it's targeting uh, existing compilers. Okay, this is understanding how it works. How it works. How it works. Something that I'm going to leave that for the next video. So with that, that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.